Good morning. It's another good day. And I say that because, you know, when you look at a day as being a good day, it most likely will be. And often, you know, when you're in a store or someplace, you know, the, the person, uh, those, someone will say, do you have a good day? And my normal response is every day is a good day. You know, not everything about every day may be good, but there is some good in every day. Um, this morning I got a message early asking for prayers for um, a lady named Shirley. So I would ask that you too would say a special prayer for uh, Shirley this morning. Um, and just remember that, you know, when we have a positive attitude, when we look at, at today as being a good day, you know, there's a better chance that it will be than if we look at today, rah, 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 you know, it, our attitude uh, makes a lot of difference in how our days play out. And, and in some ways, uh, as we look at Luke 16, we're going to read the whole chapter today, uh, attitude comes into play here too. When Jesus starts this, this chapter, he's talking with the Pharisees and about them. But he, he, he uses a story of a dishonest manager. And I used to wonder, well, why is Jesus praising this dishonest guy? I mean, this manager knows he's going to get fired. He's been called in by the boss and warned. He knows he's going to get fired. So what does he do? He, he calls some of the people that owe his boss money, and he forgives a lot of debt for them, thinking that, you know, when I do get fired, now I'll be going to be able to talk to these people, and, and they're going to owe me, and they're going to have to take care of me, you know, or, or whatever. I mean, you know, it's kind of reverse logic. They don't really owe him anything. And, and you think about it, if... If the, the person that was uh, forgiven 450 pints of oil or whatever it was, uh, if this man comes and says, I want a job, well, how much, how apt is this person to give this guy a job when he sees, well, this is how you manage the other person's property. And th this manager knows that he's not capable of physical labor. He knows he's not able to do, I mean, he knows his limitations. So he's trying to store up treasures on earth. And this parable reminds me of a, uh, I worked retail years ago. Uh, there was a young man who was stealing from the store. He was putting things out with the garbage. You know, rather than putting everything on the shelf, he would leave some in the box and put it out with the garbage. And then either after work, he would pick it up or his friends would come pick it up. But he got caught and the manager of the store fired him. And a couple weeks later, the manager of the store I worked for saw this young man working at another store. And my manager knew the manager of that store, and, and he said, you know, this is what happened with that man in my store, so keep an eye on him. Well, he got fired from that store too. Who's ever dishonest in a little will most likely continue to be dishonest. And in an awful lot of ways, you know, we can give second chances, and and we do for the most part. But when we give someone a second chance, we watch them more closely. So Jesus isn't praising this dishonest manager. He's, he's using him as an example of, of the difference of what is maybe treasured on earth or having treasures on earth rather than treasures in heaven. He says, you know, nobody can serve two masters. You can't serve God and money. You can't you can't work for this person and then over here cut him down to another. You, you, I mean, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to business and you gotta be honest in your dealings. And, and so much of the world isn't honest in dealings. And as I said, Jesus was talking a little bit about and to the Pharisees. And it says, you know, 14, verse 14, the Pharisees were lovers of money, heard this and they ridiculed him. You know, they were, they were watching their treasury, as you know, I can understand watching the church budget and everything that way, but uh, they were being dishonest about it, and they were not upfront and everything with people. And Jesus says to them, you are the ones who justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows what's in your hearts. For what is prized by human beings is an abomination in the sight of God. And Cheryl often says, God knows what's in our hearts, and I agree 100%. God knows who we are. He knows what's in our hearts. He knows what's in our minds. He knows who we are. And for the most part, you know, we're kind of careful in who we let know exactly who we are. 
You know, there, I mean, and the reality is, is that nobody really knows us 100%. I mean, it's, um, we can get close. We can know somebody really well, but um, there's always a little bit of hesitancy, a lot not hesitancy, but there's always a little bit hiddenness in who we actually truly 100% are. And Jesus talks to the Pharisees again. He's ending up this first part of, of this chapter. And he says, um, he, he refers to the, the prophets and the, the law and the prophets were good until John came. And then John came preaching and teaching of the kingdom of God. And that's what I'm doing. And you're not hearing it. You know, um, he says that you can't enter the kingdom of God by force. You can't force your way in to God's love, huh? you know? And God's love is freely given and, and we can turn our backs on it and we can take advantage of a lot of things that way, but you know, it's, uh, we, can't, we can't force ourselves into heaven. And it's, it's kind of playing off of that manager, that dishonest manager, you know, we can't, we can't pull the wool over God's eyes. He knows who we are. All of us intimately. And uh, starting in verse 19, uh, he talks about a rich man dressed in purple, fine linen, who feasted sumptuously every day, and a poor beggar who was covered with sores who sat at this rich man's gate every day and would have gladly eaten the slop that fell from the table. You know, kind of like the prodigal son who would have eaten the slop he was feeding the pigs. But, the, but these two men die. And they go to their reward. And, and the rich man finds himself in hell, tormented by the heat and, and thirsty and just miserable. And, and he looks across the chasm. And, and I don't believe for a minute that when we die, if you, you know, that we're going to be able to see across from heaven to hell or the other way and, and that, that stuff. But in Jesus' example, he says, the rich man sees this poor man dives as Lazarus, who was covered with sores and begging at his gate and just... Um, he sees him there with Abraham, Father Abraham, in heaven. And he says, hey, send Lazarus down here to give me a drink of water. You know, still still being a rich, entitled person. You know, still thinking other people should wait on him. But another important thing to notice here is that this rich man knows who Lazarus is. He had ignored him as he laid out at his gate. He ignored him all of those years or days, whatever. He had ignored this, this poor sick man had never fed him, never greeted him, probably walked by the other side of the door. I'm reading into that a little bit. But he knew, he knew who this man was, even though he never went out of his way to try to help him or not even go out of his way. He didn't even have any compassion on him. But yet he expects, he expects this man to be at his beck and call. And Father Abraham says, can't do it. There's a huge chasm that no one can cross from here to there. We are separated. There is no getting from where you are to where we are or from where we are to where you are. You are where you are, and that's final. And then the rich man seems to accept that. Understands that you know he didn't do the right things when he was living. So he says, he pleads, he begs, he says, well then send him back down to earth. I've got five brothers. Send him back down there to warn them so that they don't end up here with me. They'll believe if someone comes from the dead is what the rich man says. Again, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and to those who don't believe. And Father Abraham says, you know, even if someone comes back from the dead, those who choose not to believe, they're not going to believe. They're just going to say, it's a farce. It's a, you know, something else. No, no. You know, it's, this is the rich man's father. I beg you, send him to my father's house. I have five brothers that he might warn them so they might not come into this place of torment. And their response is, they have Moses and they have the prophets. They should listen to them. Jesus is telling us, listen to God's word. Hear God's word. And, you know, but the response, well, no, they're not going to listen to Moses and the prophets. But someone from the dead, they will repent. The response is, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they're certainly not going to listen. 
Even, even, he says, if someone rises from the dead. Jesus is predicting the disbelief, the unbelief, the refusal to believe of so many, of so many. And, and I, I mean, I talk about the Jews every once in a while, but they were God's chosen people, still are. They still are God's chosen people, according to the Bible, according to the Holy Scriptures, according to what their, their scriptures tell them. Their scriptures end, though, at the Old Testament. They don't, they don't know the New Testament. They don't know Jesus. And so even though Jesus rose from the dead, so many, so many still refuse to believe. There are Christian Jews. I know some. There was a seminary classmate of mine that was a Christian Jew. And his mission, his mission in life, his goal as he became a pastor was to, to be a pastor to the Jews, a Christian pastor to the Jews, to try to help them believe that Jesus did indeed rise from the dead and that Jesus is indeed the Messiah. I am grateful that I believe that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I know that today is going to be a good day. So may your day be good as well. And your attitude will make a lot of difference in how that plays out. God's blessings today as always.